Hey there, thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you're enjoying Activate so far and I'm excited to keep that going for you. Today, I'll be walking through how we enhance our mobile strategy by breaking down data barriers. Now, before we break down those data barriers, let me introduce myself. My name's Alex Ferrar and I'm the Retention Marketing Manager at Cars.com. I've had the opportunity to work at Cars.com for a little over two and a half years. And as the Retention Marketing Manager, I lead strategy and tactical implementation for our digital consumer touch points, specifically email and push marketing efforts. And I do this to drive timely and engaging experiences to our in-market car shoppers. Now, before I get too into what I do at cars.com, I wanna share a little bit of fun facts about me. So I have been a member of Women of Email, which is a professional network aimed at promoting leadership among women within email marketing since 2018. Last year, I had the opportunity to join Iterable's Marketing Master, which is a panel of leaders in the growth marketing community. And a fun fact about me, since I am in the email marketing space, I love sharing what my first email address was. It was rockinal at hotmail.com. Yes, this email is still active. Yes, you can definitely email me after this presentation. But to be honest, I usually only um, use it to sign up to receive dream vacation giveaways. So to give you a little bit more context about what I do and who I work for, I work for cars.com. And we don't own cars, we don't sell cars, but we do help millions of shoppers find their perfect car by connecting them with local dealers across the country. We're a digital market marketplace and solutions provider for the automotive industry. We connect car shoppers with sellers. And my job is specifically working on our B2C side of the business, working with that shopper audience, those who are interested in purchasing a vehicle. And at cars.com, we empower shoppers with the data, resources, and digital tools so they can make informed buying decisions, so they can walk into that dealership feeling confident that they're going to find the perfect vehicle. Today, we're going to go over data. Data is a pretty broad term, so we're going to level set what specific data I'm talking about and what to do with that data. Then we'll go into how to leverage that data and how we at Cars use that data to crack the code for our mobile app users really understanding what drives and motivates this audience to convert. We'll also highlight some takeaways we've seen from our app first approach and also discuss what you can do to start this process yourself. Now I wanna take a moment to really have the, the words on this slide seep in. So understanding consumer behavior is the foundation of consumer retention. We're gonna be talking about this for the next 20 minutes. So I really wanna make sure that everyone understands what I mean. What do you mean, Alex? When you're looking at user behavior, you're looking at what actions they're taking on your website, what actions they're taking on your app, and what consistent habits that they're constantly doing. If they have an affinity to certain products or pages, or if they really like a specific tool that you're featuring. Now, this behavior should really be your foundation. We're talking about building an unmatched mobile strategy. So you wanna make sure you have a solid foundation. I like to compare it with you would never start to build a house without a solid foundation. And you should think about this approach the same way. Your data is your foundation. It's reliable, it's stable, and it's steady. And in the end, it will help you build your multi-million dollar dream home. So when I'm talking about data, I'm really focusing on what consume, our consumers are doing throughout their shopper journey. And I do wanna preface that no shopper journey is the exact same. Everyone has a different shopper journey. Everyone is looking for a different vehicle and having their own experience. But by collecting this data, we wanna make sure we're talking to them wherever they are. Unlocking this information really allows you to provide the, your consumers with highly relevant, highly personalized information and experiences. And that in turn turns into increased consumer engagement and at the end of the day, loyalty. Your foundation is ultimately what brings the users back and they become loyal to your brand and you're able to successfully convert and retain them. So let's talk about the problem we're all encountering today. Us as marketers encounter this problem on a daily basis. How do we talk to our consumers with relevant data? How, do we, how are we gonna gauge our consumers in a way that actually gets them to convert? And I'm gonna talk about a solution today using a use case specifically from cars, but it really comes down to having a comprehensive view of our consumers. And that allows you to make a relevant, consolidated approach of how you speak to them. It allows you to see the type of content you need to be creating and really identify if there's any missing gaps in your data that you're collecting and your strategy. 
So specific to cars, I'm gonna take you through an actual case study to show you the steps that we took to solve this problem, how we approach the problem, our thoughts and considerations along the way, what type of solution we came up with and what was identified, and a few of the challenges that we encountered. So right now we were, previously we were only able to see half of our audience. We had a great foundation for our web users and our email marketing program, but we were really skipping out on what our app users were doing. So our challenge was to reach 100% of our audience with content that mattered, with content that converted. And we wanted to do this by painting a clear picture of our consumer base. And we wanted to do that through data enablement. So I wanted to take a second to talk about and give some context about the problem we're solving for. And to do that, you really have to understand cars.com shoppers at a glance. So we were able to pull 2020 data and really data over the past year about what people were doing on our website, if they were buying, what kind of vehicles that they were interested in. And we found that shoppers logged 30 million hours onto cars.com this past year. People are looking for vehicles at this time. And of those people we were able to survey, of those people who purchased a car, 36% of our shoppers were first time car buyers. And this was specifically driven by the pandemic. Most people are prioritizing car ownership because of the safety it provides in the current environment. But we wanna make sure that we're talking to these people differently. If it's the first time you're buying a car, you might approach our site differently if, than if you were particularly focused on a make model that you had had in the past that you were really a big fan of. And then specific to this presentation, we wanted to focus on our mobile shoppers. And of our mobile shoppers that we surveyed, 84% plan to purchase a vehicle within the next six months. Six months. Now, that's a very, very long shopper journey. It's not like other industries. So we wanted to make sure that we had relevant content for those users the entire journey that they, that they were spending their time with us. And to do that, we had to make sure that we no longer had siloed data. We were currently talking to those consumers the same way, no matter what channel they indicated interest in. And we were ignoring a rich, highly engaging audience. So we wanted to fix that. Now I'm gonna talk you through the steps that we took to get there, how we painted a clear picture. And it closely aligns with some famous movie one-liners. So I summed up these takeaways in a fun and easy, easy to remember way. So how do we start this? We wanted to make sure we were hooking consumers in the beginning by understanding what actions they were taking and where they were specifically engaging. Like I mentioned before, we had a really good foundation from web activity but it was taking that and applying it to our app activity. We didn't want to talk to these users the same way, and we shouldn't, because our findings had suggested that app users are more loyal and more likely to convert because the power of the thumb is real. So what did we do? What was our first step? Our team started with an app data audit. What data we had access to, where it was coming from, and which platforms we could utilize to help us get the information that we needed. Through this exercise, we audited hundreds upon hundreds of data points solely based off of mobile app activity. We looked specifically at the events that were being captured, how they were being passed to iterable, and what specific fields in those events we were getting from both an iOS and Android perspective. And then from there, we were able to identify how to use that data to guide the shopper through their car buying journey. Now, when I talk about valuable data, this process is a very long, very extensive process. So you're going, to, you're going to find that it's going to take you some time. So we want to make sure that you're still optimizing your program along the way. And we were able to find that we had some really valuable data nuggets that we didn't even realize we were getting that we could implement in our email programs right away. So make sure that you spot those so you can uh, optimize your channel. Like any marketer, I'm all for the more data, the better. But going through this exercise allowed us to really look at the user activity and determine if we were going to be able to act on that through our messaging. At the end of the day, we decided we didn't need everything, every, everything we could get our hands on. And in most cases, there's costs associated with retaining that data. So we consolidated, we dropped off some data points, and we really focused on the data that made the most sense for our consumer journey. And that would allow us to drive users to that conversion. Now, like I mentioned, this is gonna take some time, but it is so rewarding. Starting with a clean and complete data set opens up a world of opportunities across your channels. Data captures are really the building blocks of your program. And once you establish that, that's really when you start to reap the rewards of your program. 
And data organization really gives you a clear picture of your audience. And it gets you start, think, you start thinking about strategy and how you can smartly approach to segment your audiences, app versus web. And take this time to really understand what, you, what you're collecting now, but also what you want in the future. And it's a good opportunity also to build a roadmap of data requests that you, don't, you couldn't find that you have um, for continued optimization. Like I said, we're dealing with an audience that takes up to six months to purchase a vehicle. It's a long consumer journey. So we wanna make sure that our data that we're collecting and the content that we're providing continues to stay relevant to our audience. Now that we were able to understand what a particular consumer was doing on our app, we were able to now map that action back to what data we were already collecting. So the next step was to complete that user's profile really give a complete, comprehensive 360 degree view of what a consumer was doing. And we laid a great foundation when we migrated to Arable. We were able to modernize our data structure, the approach to fuel retargeting efforts. We were able to push multiple different data sources through a single instance through Iterable and capture hundreds of data points to also pass through Iterable on a daily basis. And this is really how how we started establishing a single profile view for our consumers. And we utilized Interval's user field capabilities and event histories. But we wanted to take it one step further. We really wanted to single out profile actions based off of our app activity and add those to user fields in Interval. And to do this, we had to combine data sets and build up our existing tech stack to help us map that activity. Now, you'll see in this diagram that we, re that we rely heavily on our internal data warehouse. Our team captures key events that our consumers take and aggregates them to pass into Iterable. However, with this aggregation, we were unable to tell where a specific user had taken this action, where they'd given us their email address. And we wanted to get a, a more sophisticated in our approach by identifying where these users were coming from, what devices they were acting on, and if they were using just our app, just our website, or both at the same time. So we partnered with a customer data platform, a CDP, CDP vendor to track acti app activity. And this is really how we were able to do an extensive audit of our app data being passed into Iterable. However, we were previously just scratching the surface in terms of messaging and retargeting based off of in-app activity. Now, in this new approach, you'll notice that we built up our existing tech stack. We started integrating key actions that were tracked by our CDP our app activity and incorporated it with our internal data to add new user events in Iterable to track our app users more effectively across key actions on our app. Now, we were already partnering with a, a personalization platform to help us track on-site behavior to launch a cart abandonment series from an email perspective. And with this vendor, we were, we were able to seamlessly integrate that vendor into our CDP that helped us start to track in-app search behavior and launch push messaging based off of that behavior. And this enabled us to do behavioral analysis across web and in-app activity. This really helped us expand the recommendations and content we were providing our users because we were able to see those users, the users we hadn't been able to see before, and identify where, what they were doing and how they were searching across browsers. The example that I love to give is Ford versus Ferrari. I could have been searching for a Ford on our website, but a Ferrari on an app. And I was messaging people separately based off of that and not directing that integration and that, that messaging. So with this integration, we were able to actually consolidate that into a single identifiable user, even if they use two different email addresses in our app and our website. So it really opened the doors and we were really excited about this integration. And we now had access to data in a way that we hadn't had before. And while we were shopping, while we had our shopper journey to ground us and really guide us with this data, we were able to do more of a one-to-one -one personalization and one-to-one -one communication, starting to individualize interactions and start automating real-time personal, personalized messages in both email and in push. So we were able to use the data we audited, the integrations we had to use that cross-channel data to connect shopper touch points to offer highly relevant content. And with the integrations that we did, we were able to unify behavior history across those devices and really fine tune what messages we wanted to send based off of the behavior that they were taking. And we were able to expound, expand the amount of data we were able to trigger off of in Iterable. 
some examples that we were able to trigger off of is when people started opening the app, if they lost interest and stopped engaging, how we can target them and re-engage them to use, come back to our app and use it. A couple other examples, the last action they took, where did they fall off in their app? in their app journey? Did they do an initial car search? What was the specific vehicle they searched for? And was this user searching on our website as well? If they were, let's make sure that that data is integrated for our push campaign or for our email campaign. And then really sending them vehicle recommendations based off of the activity that they were doing. So what was the outcome? What kind of results did we see? Were we able to give consumers what they want, where they want it? Yes. We were able to automate personalized campaigns in Iterable by mapping out key events. If they took this action, we were right there with them for a recommendation and how to get them to do the next action. We expanded the reach and relevance of our campaign campaigns and sent dynamic content and curated audiences from both an in-app and a web experience. And we coordinated a communication and suppression across channels. We were able to engage with consumers across channels, really using our full 100% audience, which was our challenge before. And we were able to talk to them in a way that we hadn't talked to them before and deciding which channel was appropriate to message someone. If we were going to use both, push only, email only, and really start outlining what kind of testing strategies we wanted to do. And really, we were able to increase our email and push retargeting abilities to an untapped subscriber base. So in doing this integration and in doing this data audit, we were really able to understand our consumer shopping habits. and we were there ready to provide them recommendation. And we were drastically able to improve our existing push campaigns while also powering new and sophisticated campaigns. And we were able to target consumers who fell off, who stopped before converting, and we were able to find them a vehicle. And then we also were able to decrease app abandonment in real time through personalized messaging. So how does this relate to you? How can you use this in your own business? Some of the takeaways that I have, you had me at hello. So making sure that you're hooking consumers in the beginning, understanding what actions they're taking and where they're taking it. There's no I in data. Data is a team sport. This step does not happen overnight. You need to be patient, patient with your approach and you don't need to get overwhelmed. It's gonna be a lot of data, but you can handle it. Collaborate with other departments to build your knowledge surrounding the data to fuel your program. Now, once you have that data, see how you can get it in a central location. Complete it. Complete a consumer's profile into a single view, whether that's relying on your ESP or multiple vendor partners to help you do that. And this will really help with segmentation and further personalization with your program. Now, how you layer your marketing technologies is as equally as important as the technologies themselves. The more integrations a vendor has with other technologies, it really opens the door and it's easier um, to expand the use cases and utilize that tool cross-functionally. Our personalization platform is able to integrate with our CDP, which is also able to integrate with Iterable and vice versa. So we're really able to utilize that connection, but it really comes down to finding the right tools for your business. And then the last thing, show me the money. Give consumers what they want and when they want it, but also impress your leadership team. Launch your program, test and learn. You don't need to invent an entirely new strategy overnight. Start small and don't feel pressured to build Rome in a day. Now we talked about breaking down data, data silos, data barriers, and really to do this, you wanna make sure that once the data you collect, that's the stepping stones to building the best, best mobile strategy. You wanna make sure that you're speaking to your consumers and speaking to their preferences with the data that you collected and continuously giving them the content to continue to stay active and in turn convert. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a great rest of your time and activate. Please be on the lookout for me in the speaker's Q&A.